Before we start this video, a large thank you to Umberto44, Jimothy, The Dougal, Ire, Hassan, Jacob, Norbert, Smash, and Jacques for their support on Patreon. I hope you guys enjoy the video. And a special thank you to Halo Burner for their immense support to the channel this month on Patreon. It is greatly appreciated, my friend, and I hope you enjoy the video. Hello everybody, and today we're going to start our AI by first making our World AI Manager to spawn in our characters. So let's go to the World scene, not the main menu scene. I'm going to delete the dummy I have in here, because right now I have to hit the Spawn button every single time I come in here. So we're going to make this one need to do that. I'm going to make an empty game object here, reset its transform, and I'm going to call it World AI Manager. Next, I am going to add a component to this game object, and I'm going to call it World AI Manager. So this is going to be basically the script that handles anything to do with our AI in the world scene. So I'm going to start by erasing the start and update function, as is per tradition. I'm going to put in my namespace. And now I'm going to make this a singleton, because we're only going to need one of these in the scene at any given time, and we want to be able to reference it from anywhere. I'm going to make a public static world AI manager variable, going to call it instance, you know how this goes by now. On awake, if instance is null, instance equals this, else destroy this game object. If you want to make this a bit safer, quote unquote, you can use a getter and setter, but I'm just going to use the public static, uh, just the singleton class we've always been using here, the way of setting it up. So I'm going to say using unity.netcode up here at the top. And then I am going to make a start function. And on start, I'm going to simply say if network manager .singleton .is server. you could probably use is host too, but we're going to use is server. So if this is the server, meaning if this is not on the client's end, if this is not the client's network manager, then we're going to spawn all the AI in the scene. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to do it by using uh, an enumerator here, a, a coroutine. So we're going to make a private I enumerator, and we can just call this wait for scene to load and then spawn all AI in the scene. Why am I using an enumerator here? Well, I want to wait first for the scene to fully finish loading before I spawn in the AI. This is so they don't like fall through the floor or something if you have a very massive scene. Um, I just do this as a precautionary thing. So I'm going to say while, and we're going to use the scene is not loaded. And to access the scene, we're going to need to say using unity engine.scene management. And then we can check to see if the scene is fully loaded. So we're going to say while the scene manager dot get active scene. We're going to say dot is not loaded. And we're going to yield and return null, which means just wait. So while the scene is not loaded, just keep returning. Don't do anything. And then after it is loaded, we're going to make a private void spawn all characters. We're going to call this function after it passes this while loop. And that's it. So right now that function doesn't do anything. Oh, we have to start the coroutine here too inside start. So we're going to say start coroutine, wait for scene to load and spawn all characters. Okay, so right now this function has no information in it and it really does nothing. So let's go up top here and make a header. I'm going to call this characters. And inside this header here, the first variable I want to make is a serializable field. It's going to be a game object array. And this will be all the characters in your world that you want to spawn. So I'm just going to call it AI characters. Whatever you want to call it, as long as the name is clear to you. This is every character in the world that you're going to spawn or respawn, basically. Okay, so now that we have a list or an array, rather, of characters, let's go back to the project and go to our prefabs. You can see here we have a dummy. Now, we're not going to use it in this video, but I'm going to get rid of the character manager. And we're going to make a new AI character manager. So let's add a component, AI character manager. And let's drag that component up to where the character manager script is on the game object. And let's erase the character manager. Then let's open the AI character manager and let's just make it derive from the character manager script. So it gets all of the functionality and logic that the character manager has access to. And to do that, we need to erase our start and update function and put in our namespace. Otherwise, you won't be able to do that if your character manager is in a namespace. So let's just make this derive from character manager. Now we can save that, and for now that's good. So in the next video, we're actually going to use that to start programming the AI's logic and uh, create a state machine. But for now, we're just going to get him to spawn into the scene. So let's go to the World Network Manager prefab. You can see here you have a little network prefabs list. And if you're using a different version of, of uh, netcode for game objects, it could be a basically a pack of lists. But either way, you're going to have somewhere where you can add game objects here. What you want to do is make sure you add the game object for your AI character into this list. 
And a very important note here, you can't add it from the scene. It has to be from your project. So if I were to drag this dummy, for example, into the scene and then drag that into that network prefab list, it would not work. So make sure you're actually accessing it from the project and not from the scene. That's very important. So next, let's save. And I'm going to add the dummy again from the project into our world AI manager characters list, our AI characters. And now under spawn all characters, I'm going to say for each character. So we're using a for each loop. So it's going to go through the whole array. For each character in AI characters, as in that array, what we're going to do is actually spawn it. And to do that is very simple. So we're going to start by making a game object variable. And we're going to call this uh, instantiated character. So this is going to be a copy of the original character. And we're going to say that is equal to instantiate a character, the character in this list that we're iterating through. So that creates it and places it in the world. And then to spawn on the network, all we have to do is say instantiated character dot get component network object. This reference is the network object script attached to it. Then we say dot spawn. And that's it. Now that should spawn if we save that and we were to test that out in the scene. But before we go over there now and see, let's make another serializable field for a list of game objects this time. And we're going to call this spawned characters or spawned in characters or whatever is clear to you as long as you know that this is a list of all the characters you have already spawned. And then after we spawn the character, we're going to add to spawn in characters the list or the character to that list rather. And now if we save that and make a prefab of our world AI manager and save the scene because that's very important. If I go into the game here, now you can see we have a spawn in character. And if I'm on the other client here, you can see I'm hitting it. So it's spawn in for both of us. So the character does spawn into the scene and both the client and the host can see it and interact with it. So that is working as intended. Now, what if you want to change the position of the character? Well, it's very straightforward. You don't need to over-engineer this. All you want to do is drag in wherever you want to place it in the scene, get the position, the rotation right, right-click on the transform component up here, copy component, and then go to the prefab in your project and on the transform, paste the component values as such like that. So now make sure you delete the dummy from the scene. You can't keep that there. I'm going to also rename this to dummy01, and I'm going to duplicate it and rename it to dummy02. Now, this is a separate game object, so make sure you're adding this new game object to the network prefabs list again as well. So I'm just going to get dummy02's uh, position here in the game just to show you that this works, and we can set up two different transform positions. So I'm going to copy this again, the component of the new transform rotation position, and on dummy2, I'm going to paste this second position, now I'm going to delete this dummy from the scene. Now go to our network prefabs list and add this here. Also, don't forget to add it to your newly created world AI manager to actually spawn it into the scene, but make sure you add it to this list first. So go over here, or rather add it to the list before you try to spawn it or else it won't spawn. Okay, so now that we have that added to our list and we've created a couple prefabs in the scene and positioned them, what we want to do now is again, go over to our world AI manager and add every character that you want to spawn in there, make sure you're doing it from the project again, and save that. So now I will go and save the scene and jump back into the game. You can see here, boom, one's on that little cliff and one is to my left over there. So that's working as intended. And they spawn in the positions that we set them up in. So next, let's go back over to the world AI manager. And now let's make some logic to despawn all these characters. You do this, for example, if you rested at a site of grace, or you wanted to basically put these into separate areas and despawn certain areas. So we're going to do all because we just have the one small area for now. So we're going to say despawn all characters. What we're going to do now is reference every character in our spawned in characters list. So we're just going to use a for each loop again. And all you want to do is go through that list and then reference each character and just basically just say for each character in spawned in characters, you want to just use character dot get component network object and then just say dot despawn. That's it. Now you want to clear this list after and reset it, but we're going to get to that and we'll actually clean up the list and reset it when we actually get to making sites of grace and checkpoints. I just want to show you that this works for now. So we're going to make a header and debug and we're just going to set up two variables, a bool for respawn and despawn all characters. And when we switch these bools to true, we're going to do either of the actions. And I'm just going to show you after two, and we're going to connect with the client that you can see this is respawning and despawning on both the client and the host's end. So under update, we're going to say if despawn characters, despawn characters equals false. And then we're going to call our despawn characters function. Likewise, 
if respawn characters, respawn characters is equal to false, then we're just going to call our spawn all characters function. So some notes here. You might not want to actually despawn them all. You might want to disable them, which we're going to cover in a future video. But before we get into that stuff, that's more optimization setup. We're actually going to get the AI's logic in. So in the next video, we're going to focus on actually setting up um, some states like idle and pursue target, et cetera, et cetera. But then after we've done all that, uh, we'll get into all those little logistics. So you can see here, I've got a client connected and running around. I've also got the host. Now, if I go over and despawn all the characters and I drag over here my client window, they're gone. Now, if I were to respawn the characters here, you can see they both pop back up here in the host view. Now, if I were to drag the client window over here as well, you can see, boom, there they are. So this is working as intended. Now you have a way to spawn in and despawning characters. And this sets us up perfectly to create some little scenes. So before we're, we go though, I'm going to expand upon a comment I made earlier. And I'm just gonna make a, an empty function here now. We're gonna fill it with a to-do list because we are gonna do this in the future. We're gonna call this disable all characters and instead of despawning them. So what we do here is basically we're going to set up a flag and we're gonna have it so it's a network variable and it will just basically state whether the character is disabled or enabled, it'll be a bool. And when you join as a client, depending on that bool status, we're gonna enable or disable a game object, um, et cetera, et cetera. What are the pros of this? Well, you're not spawning and despawning a bunch of game objects, so it's nice, it's a bit easier in the memory load. And also you might wanna have just some things readily available just to turn on instead of having to spawn it, because if you get a lot going on and you need spawn in say 150 characters, that could cause some stutter or just some unnecessary frame drops or memory problems. So sometimes it's better to do that when you load into the game and then enable them and disable them as you need them. Now, this is very dependent on what kind of project you're making. This might not be the case, but these are definitely the pros and cons and I've experimented with both. And I use both in my project. And I'll just show you a very simplified version of what I have set up here now. Um, I'm basically gonna go over to uh, Nephilim and basically I have it so using the same system of, of flagging, enabling and disabling, Depending on how far away you are from an AI, I just have it set up here for very close proximity. So you can see it'll actually enable. See that pop on the screen there? If I walk away, it disables. Now, if I show you the hierarchy here, you can see the game object turns on and then it turns off. And this isn't culling. This is basically the system. So if you're within X radius of the character, it will spawn. Meaning like if you have some overlap, let's say area one leaks into area two, you can't just disable all the AI in area one because if you're caught somewhere in that little transitory place, you'd see them just disappear. So I have it set up in my project so that you have to be a certain radius away for them to despawn. It's very easy to set up. I'll go through that too in the future. We're gonna cover optimization as well and handling a lot of AI in the scene because that's very important. But before we get to all that, obviously, we need to actually create the fun stuff, the functionality of the AI. I did wanna to touch on this though because this is something I'm very excited to cover and showcase. There's also a lot of cool little tricks we're gonna go over uh, as far as networking, like making animations look smooth and the transforms and locations look smooth when a lot of targets are moving on screen. But yeah, we will get to all of that. So next video, goal is to start states. We're gonna start with the idle state and if we got time, we're gonna do the pursue target state as well. We're then gonna go on to the combat stand state and the attack states and we're gonna create some attacks for our characters and set up a little scene. All right, guys, thank you very much for joining me as always. I hope you learned something new today and I will see you next week. A special thank you to my patrons. As usual, it is because of all of you I get to keep doing this and I love doing this. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you. All right, guys, enjoy your weekend. Talk soon.